Hello, welcome to the Fleet 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute-related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode 152, Podcasting, an Entrepreneurial Opportunity for the Modern Day Musician, Part 1. Hey, welcome back to another Flute 360 podcast episode. As promised, I am delivering more episodes every week for your benefit. I love connecting with y'all. I love hearing your ideas and sharing those ideas with one another that I felt so inspired going into year four that I wanted to revamp the contents schedule. And so this week is the first week of this new setup. I am thrilled to be talking about entrepreneurial ideas, flute pedagogy, flute literature, repertoire, tone development, and the list goes on and on. So this first week, I was extremely inspired by my talks with recent universities and colleges. I have been invited lately to talk about my podcasting world and the many benefits of podcasting for musicians. So I thought to take a step back and reflect on this information and decide if it was good content for my Flute 360 listeners, and I came to the conclusion that it was. I know that on social media, I'm talking about me having conversations through consultation calls, setting up flute lessons and things like that. And I thought, well, maybe if somebody's watching this, they don't know really how I'm going about it. And it boils down to the podcast. The podcast is basically a spotlight that highlights my business. And then you ask, okay, Heidi, (laughs) what is your business? Well, my business is being a self-employed musician. I am not affiliated with any school districts because that got canned because of COVID and China dropped off. And um, because I thought I was moving out to China, I had set up, you know, other teachers in the area to cover my Texas students. So with all of that being mixed up and everything, I had to really revamp what I was doing, and how I was doing it. Well, I already had the podcast running. All I had to do was figure out unique ways to bring in different streams of income since July 2020, and I have done just that. So podcasting for me has been super important, not only to my development as a person and as a musician, but now as a business owner. And so if you are curious about podcasting, this episode is all about this digital platform and all of the various benefits that stem from such a medium. So I can't wait to dive into the content and I hope that it serves you well. Moving on, most of you know about the Flute 360 podcast, but in case you don't know the backstory, let me just give you a little history. So I started my DMA in 2015, and at the exact same time, my husband had to leave his full-time audio engineer job at our local church in Keller. And it was a really hard decision because he took years to gain such a position And moments later, not even months later, I asked him, can we go to Lubbock so I can pursue my DMA? He didn't even flinch. He said, yes, anything to support you, which I know I'm extremely blessed. But at the same time, we were leaving the security of a full-time job with benefits. So going out to Lubbock, there were no churches at the time hiring audio engineers or live technicians for sound throughout the Sunday services. So that was not an option. 
It basically boiled down to him saying, okay, I don't have many options. How do I make this work? Well, he had finished his Pro Tools certification a couple years prior to this season in our life. So he decided, okay, I'm going to start reaching out to people who need audio and video work for their creative projects. Well, podcasting was never a thought to either of us, but podcasters needed audio help with their shows. So he got in touch with a couple different companies, but he started helping these podcasters with their audio edits. Then as it grew, he started obtaining his own clients through JK Media Productions. I tell you all of this because it didn't happen overnight for him and neither did Flute 360 either. But that was the first leg in the door or the first foot in the door where podcasting started becoming a thing at the Big A House. I started learning about the platform, the technical equipment, the know-how, the niche, how to market a podcast, how podcasters talked, how they communicated with each other, on and on. You get the gist. So that was 2015. And then around that time, when my friend Sam started getting to know me, And Eric, he said, you should start a flute podcast. I was like, "Eh, (laughs) that's not for me. No one's going to want to hear about, you know, me talking about flute through the air. And so I kind of put a pin in it. Well, then my husband, Eric, also encouraged the idea. He goes, you love to share. You love to educate. Why not share that information to your flute community? So that way everyone can grow throughout their musical journey. So again, I thought about it a little bit more. And then at the end of my degree, especially for a master's and or a doctorate, you need some sort of thesis or dissertation or some project. Well, my mentor at the time really encouraged me to do the same thing. Heidi, you should start a podcast. This will be a great project for your DMA degree, but then also to help launch you into your career and post-graduation. So all of that is to say that, you know, be really open to ideas, listen to what life is asking you to consider, because if you have your blinders up too strong and hard, you could possibly miss out on those natural organic opportunities that are presented right before your eyes. And that's how I feel Flute 360 crept into my life. So it was my DMA thesis, but then I continued it. I thought, okay, this would be a great creative project to showcase on my CV. If there is a full-time Flute professor position out there, perhaps the committee will be so inclined to ask and think and to notice something that is super creative. So I kept it going. And not just for CV building, I don't want to sound stingy, but it was also because I was learning tons. I was making great connections with my listeners, like you, my guests and companies. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. All of Those relationships were unfolding from me just emailing somebody and saying, I want to pick your brain. I want to learn from you. And then the cherry on top is that you, the listener, kept messaging me saying, oh, I really loved episode 41 with Ho Fan Lee. I really enjoyed Kathy Blocky's episode about kinder flute. And so that just gave me a huge boost of motivation and inspiration to continue Flute 360. Well, then fast forward to 2020, I received a job in Shanghai, China. And I thought, okay, I'm going to pursue that. And then COVID had different plans. (laughs) So since July 2020, 
I really had to take a huge step back and say, all right, what do I have access to? What resources do I have access to? And I took an inventory of where I was in life. So I came to the conclusion that Flu360 could serve me in the business sense. So that's what I want to showcase to you today. And I'm sharing this information because of our times. Our technological world is developing at a rapid pace. I think that us 21st century musicians really need to tap into these skill sets and hone these skill sets in the technological world. If COVID has taught us anything, it has taught us that we need to be very fluent with video conferencing tools like Zoom, Skype, right? Same thing with microphones and headphones, audio interfaces, setup. It's not just having the equipment, but knowing how to set it up. So with COVID and our technological world really affecting our current climate, I wanted to showcase what my digital world was bringing me, how it was benefiting me and my little part of the world to all musicians. I know all musicians can benefit from a podcast. It sounds crazy, but I really think it could be the next frontier for the modern day musician. And yeah, that sounds pretty dramatic, but I really think it's true. It's an untapped market for musicians. There are tons of podcasts out there about entertainment, hunting, gardening, tea drinking, you name it, pop culture. But if you look at the inventory of musical-based podcasts, there are a lot of piano ones, perhaps some violin ones, and that makes sense because there's a lot of violinists and pianists. But if you look at, for example, flute, because <laughs> you're probably a flutist listening to this show right now, there is about four or five podcasts right now, right? And if you look at these five flute podcasts, we all have something different to offer. We all have different personalities, characters, and a very unique perspective. We all have such different voices and talents and things to share in our own unique way, which is a beautiful thing. Now, if you are a flutist and you're listening to this, there's a place for you. <laughs> there's only five flute podcasts out there right now. So just think of what you can bring to the table. What's your unique voice and skill set that you can offer your community? And if you're not a flutist, well, welcome. I'm so glad you are here. Take a moment to check out Apple Podcast and see what podcast offerings are available through your instrument. So I'd be curious to know, like if you're a clarinetist, check it out. Let me know how many clarinet podcasts there are. And the reason why I'm nudging you to podcasting is because it's digital. If things are getting shut down, if things are being put on pause, if things are coming to a halt, you can still have a piece of this digital real estate in order to connect with your people. How cool is that? So this is why I'm presenting this information. If I can contribute anything to this pandemic, then let this be this episode and episode 153. So get those wheels turning. Start thinking of these creative projects if it's not a podcast. Find a digital space where you feel comfortable. It can be vlogging or blogging but I really encourage you to utilize your resources and make those connections. Now, if you are thinking about a podcast, just know that a podcast, like I said earlier, is to shed light on your business. And then you're thinking, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, 
It can mean, you know, highlighting your different products, services, and offerings. It can mean that it's highlighting the digital PDFs that you have put together. It means that it can highlight your digital remote classes, your services like music lessons, presentations, being a masterclass clinician, and the list goes on and on, right? Even being perhaps a guest artist at a virtual flute convention. The possibilities are really endless. So since you're listening to a podcast, it would be silly for me to tell you all the details about podcasting, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm pretty dorky, so here we go. A podcast is a program made available in digital audio format for automatic download or streaming over the internet to an electronic device such as a smartphone, tablet, computer, etc., It's so easy for not only the podcast host to deliver and produce new episodes on a weekly basis, but it's also super convenient for you, the podcast listener, to consume the information. Again, digital is the way to go. As mentioned earlier, there are various fields. Basically, it boils down to two big categories, I think. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but... I think it boils down to these two categories. Either you have some research-based or educational-based podcast, or it's going to be entertainment-based. And the origins of podcasting go way back 17 years to 2004 with two developers or two creators, and they are Adam Curry and David Weiner. So I hope you like that little podcast history. To extend it just a wee bit more, you should know that podcasting is to share targeted information to your tribe. Not only are you sharing, you know, information at the local level, but it's being shared nationally and internationally. I cannot tell you how many amazing, genuine, authentic relationships have formed through 360 because of this shared information. At first, it was, hey, my flute friend in Texas, listen to episode one with Dr. Susan Fain. And then said friend would listen and, you know, that'd be it, which is awesome. A great start. But then a couple months later, it was connecting me with amazing flute teachers, performers, and students across the country. One of the very first friends that I made through the Flute 360 podcast is and was Sarah Robertson, who is a flute teacher out in Ohio. That relationship bloomed and evolved, and later she became a guest through the Flute 360 podcast. So you just never know what door is going to open by just sharing and connecting with people in an authentic way. And then fast forward even more, now I'm connecting with flutists across the globe. Poland, Finland, the UK, South Africa, Mexico, Canada. I know I'm so blessed for each and every single one of you to be here and to trust me with delivering valuable content to your earbuds week after week. So thank you. And another beautiful thing about podcasting is that it gives a voice to those who necessarily wouldn't have the opportunity. Think of what that can do for your career. And then over time, like I mentioned earlier, I'm making these relationships and fostering these new unions at the regional, national, and international levels. Well, These relationships are a real thing. Not to sound really dorky over here, but seriously, these are real connections. You are creating intimate, personal connections between the host to the guest and also from the host to the audience. You can't get any better than that. And then here I'm presenting this medium of podcasting and I want you to know that it's not a dead medium. This is something that is growing and thriving. And 
even, you know, thriving in a pandemic. So podcasting is growing exponentially. And just to give you some figures, the awareness of podcasting in 2006 was 22%. Fast forward 14 years in 2020, the awareness has grown to 75%. That's some 50% growth, right? And just in the U.S. by 2022, so next year, it's estimated that podcast listening will grow to 132 million people in the U.S. That's a staggering figure to me. So just so you know, this is a growing platform and it's something that's not going to go away anytime soon. Now, if all of this, you know, tickles your fancy and you're like, okay, that's great, Heidi, but where would I start? Well, the first place you want to start is thinking about why you want to start a podcast, right? Really think about those product services and offerings. Really make sure that you have a business established to some degree. It doesn't all have to be figured out. I know I'm still figuring it out now, you know, almost six, seven months after July, August, 2020. So it doesn't all have to be sorted out, but really think about what you are going to amplify. So if your business and your foundation is somewhat set, then that light can be shown on something substantial. The next thing I would recommend is thinking about your podcast's theme. Now think of a beautifully wrapped present with a bow on top. You want everything to be aligned and everything to be inside of this box nicely presented to the public. So your podcast's theme needs to be the intersection of your passion and your expertise. This is what John Lee Dumas calls your zone of genius. So I've given this example before. I love cats, and you know that I have three cat fur babies right? That's my passion. I love kitties, but I am not an expert on cats. So it would not make sense for me to put out a cat-based podcast. But another passion of mine in life is music and education. Okay, there's a check for passion. And then one step further, it's my field of expertise. My three degrees are in music. So that's my intersection. Therefore, my theme to my podcast is Flute 360. Think about the name of your podcast. You want the name of your podcast to be reflected well through your zone of genius, right? Also consider the podcast's album art, the content, and who you are reaching, the listener. You want to genuinely make a connection with them and give them valuable content on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. This next portion that I'm going to deliver to you is all about podcast equipment. Now, the reason I'm highlighting this equipment is because when I talk to classically trained musicians, a lot of times they look at me shocked, like, I couldn't start a podcast because I barely know how to set up a microphone. Well, yeah, I totally get it. You know, I do not have a silver thumb, as I like to call it. But over time, that skill set evolves. You start learning how to get the right equipment, you know, one piece at a time. It doesn't all happen overnight. Okay. And the other reason why I want to highlight this section of podcast equipment is because you as a musician, you probably already have some equipment in your studio or your closet right now. We musicians have to collect and invest in this equipment over time to record for concerts, competitions, recitals, summer festivals, and the list goes on and on. So why not put on your creative thinking cap and say, okay, I have some equipment just sitting there. Why not plug her in 
(laughs) and utilize it in a new creative project like a podcast. So you need about four different pieces of equipment that are super budget friendly. A side note about budget, you can, like anything, determine what you want to get out of said project or platform. And you get to decide your budget that's according to your other priorities in life, such as your hobbies, your family, bills, etc. This does not have to cost you an arm and a leg. It really is extremely affordable and you get to set your appropriate budget for what works well for you. So you need some sort of electronic device, such as your smartphone, tablet, or computer. I record through my MacBook Pro, so my computer, but I kid you not, I have been around podcasters long enough to watch them record with their smartphone, (laughs) their AirPods, and they record in voice memo app. Seriously, it could be that simple. And most of us have a smartphone, right? And with that smartphone probably came some sort of free or discounted headphones. You can use that. That's your resource. Those are your tools. Use it to your full advantage. For microphones, again, you can go as simple as headphones with the built-in microphone all the way to some fancy dynamic microphones. Here are some examples of microphones in case you are interested in investing into this equipment. First, I want to showcase the dynamic USB microphone, and this is something that's super easy. You just literally take that USB and plug it into your computer into the USB port. An example of a dynamic USB microphone is Audio-Technica ATR2100. Or if you want to do a step up where you are utilizing an audio interface, go ahead and you wanna get a dynamic microphone that will plug into the audio interface, which then plugs into your computer. The Shure SM58 microphone is great for this, and an audio interface that we use is Focusrite. The next tool that you're going to need is some sort of DAW system. Now, DAW is just an abbreviation for Digital Audio Workstation. This is where you're going to record and edit your shows. There are a ton of free (laughs) options out there. You can get GarageBand, download that onto your Mac. It comes free, right? Audacity and Pro Tools First are other free options. And I recommend these two as well because they are compatible with both Mac and PC computers. And the fourth piece of equipment that you're going to need is when you conduct remote interviews, you're going to need some sort of call recorder. So because I have a Mac, I use Skype, and the call recorder that's compatible with Mac is the eCam recorder. Now, this service is a one-time fee of $40. Not too bad. Small investment, and you'll get a lot of bang for your buck. So when I launch Skype to call my guest for their interview, it just pulls up with the Skype app. Again, easy peasy. If you have a PC, you can use a call recorder called Call Note. I have recommended that to some of my PC users in the past. So here I am going through this content, and I don't know if Eric will be able to take her out later, but Lexi is just crying up a storm. (laughs) She's probably wanting to play. So I apologize if kitty crying is in the background and it's distracting. But moving on, some other tools that I utilize in the realm of marketing are some online project management tools that I want to share. There are three tools that I think are necessary to promote your podcast. First is a website. You want 
people to find you in your episodes. You need some sort of landing page where people can come together, they can click through your embedded links, and they can reach out to you if need be. Again, you can determine the budget that you want for your show. You do not have to right off the bat throw tons of money into your website. Now, I will say that I was totally do-it-yourself in the beginning stages when I was a student because that's where my budget was. But fast forward three full years later, starting the fourth year of Flute360, I needed to work with a website developer because it was just growing too much and I needed different features to serve me and my listeners throughout my website. And that wasn't happening at the free level that I had through WordPress. But if you're just starting off, you can get free services and free templates through WordPress, Wix, and Squarespace. A side note, I want to give you a little pro tip. If you are a musician right now and you do not have a website, I highly, highly recommend it. Think of it as your digital business card. If people cannot find you, if they are having a hard time tracking you down, think of all the missed opportunities that you're missing out on, right? Gigs, teaching events, like being a masterclass clinician or a guest artist, being hired to be a presenter at a festival. You don't want that to happen. That's basically leaving money on the table. And I don't want that for you. So get a website started today if you can. The second tool that I utilize within this umbrella of online project management tools is a media hosting account. Now, it's just a fancy way of saying that it's a server that hosts the media files in the cloud. And then from there, they create an RSS feed and it shoots it out to the different online directories such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Radio Public, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, etc. I share this with you because a lot of times people go, wow, you're found on 14, 15 different podcast apps? How do you do it? Literally, my secret is that Lipson, my media hosting account, does it for me. I upload one time my one mp3 file, it pulls all the information from the file, and then it shoots it out to those 15 different podcast apps. Again, easy peasy. The third tip that I utilize is a social media marketing website. There are different services out there, but the one that I utilize is Hootsuite. It's basically a management tool for my different social media platforms. I go into Hootsuite and I sync up my Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, Instagram, and Facebook accounts, make one post, and then it shoots it out. Even better, I can schedule in advance future posts. So again, I could on a Sunday afternoon sit down, batch all my posts, schedule them out, and I'm good for the month. Literally, that's how easy and sweet of a deal it is. So those were the logistics of podcasting, the equipment, other tools, different things to consider. Thank you for listening to today's content. If you enjoyed the content, feel free to check out tomorrow's episode 153, where I continue the conversation. In episode 153, I talk about the benefits of podcasting. So stay tuned. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 podcast. Please subscribe to the Flute 360 newsletter by going to HeidiKBegay.com. A pop-up will appear and you can enter in your information for the weekly newsletter. The newsletter includes great incentives, updates, and perks to the subscribers. Go ahead to HeidiKBegay.com and sign up today. 
Thank you. Let's talk about flute.